high heel hallelujah and today is officially the first day of summer for both of my kids my daughter got out and so I had to wear the watermelon shoes because it is the start of summer for us and I just wanted to talk to you today about what you can do to build up hope and a positive future but first let's look at the shoes okay i always like to say that these are a picnic waiting to happen so here we go we've got the watermelon heel and it just looks like a picnic doesn't it so yes my husband got me these shoes i believe they are my son's favorite as well and I just love them. They're not easy to walk in, so I don't wear them all that often, but I do love them. Throwback Thursday is something that you oftentimes hear about in social media world, hashtag Throwback Thursday. And I wanted to talk about my version of a throwback, which is our testimonies. And testimonies are the things that have happened in the past for ourselves or for other people. But what they do is they build our hope. And I think it's really critical that we don't lose sight of the testimonies of our, that we have ourselves personally, as well as the people that we come into contact with because it builds hope for the future it gives us inspiration to move forward and it get, kind of builds our faith as well because we have that to rely on and unfortunately a lot of times we forget the good things in the past and isn't it interesting that we do let the negative things stick so it does take a little extra work sometimes to recall and remember those things that are your past that have built who you are today. And so today I want to share the story of a dear friend of mine. And I hope you'll bear with me because I think it might give you some hope for your future as well. So when my kids were younger and they were always at the same school, but we had a friend who her son was also at that school and they since had moved on and many years ago, they moved to a different school. But I sort of kept loosely in contact with this friend and over the years, we would see each other periodically with another friend. The three of us would go out to lunch, but most of the time we ended up having to reschedule, reschedule, reschedule our lunch. And so we didn't get to see each other a whole lot. One day it came about that I really felt like we had to make this happen. This lunch had to happen this time. And we got together and my friend shared about some things going on in her life that were a struggle. And I'm not the type of person, or at least I used to not be the type of person that would just say, I need to pray for you or can I pray for you? But I really, really felt like it was necessary and it really was kind of one of those things that I didn't feel like I had an option not to. So I went ahead and she was said yes and um, we prayed about it. And I think that was a big launching point for my connection with her because from that point on, I kept really close contact with her, mostly through text, some phone calls, and occasionally we saw each other. But she really was sharing, she had a lot of different things hitting her from every different angle, from health to um, money things and family and just all kinds of stuff. And sometimes it does feel like that, like when it rains, it pours. And she was really struggling. And I don't feel like I've ever gotten to a point where I've arrived at a better, like I've got my life together. But... You know, I think we all go through things that we can relate to somebody else when they're going through it. And so it was easy for me to connect to her and I wasn't in the same place as her at that moment. And so we could share that mutual feeling of needing to know that there is hope, that you will get through this. So I did a lot of praying with her. Over time, she was still asking me more questions about faith and God and I 
thought it was interesting because for some reason along the way, the way the Holy Spirit worked in me, when I went through my intestine rupture, if you've watched my videos or you know much about my story, uh, my intestine had ruptured and I had three surgeries. And, you know, during that time, I really got stronger in my faith. And so I got to the point where I didn't need to know the future and I and I still feel this way. It's like the depth of what God does for you and how much he builds your faith takes you to this new level where you don't need to know the future because you already know that God is in it and that he's got your back and that he is going to make something good out of anything that you go through. And that's not to say that it will be easy. And I know that we all have struggles, but it just is so reassuring to know that even when you go through really difficult things that you can come to a point where you actually don't even regret those difficulties because of how much it shaped you, how much it strengthened you. And so I would share that with her and for a long time she didn't understand, she just wanted to get through the trial. And we are all like that when we're in the trial. And I promise you that the next time I go through a trial, there is a very good chance that I'm gonna be like that too. You just want it to be over, it's human nature. You can't get mad at yourself for that. But you do have to remember the testimony, your own testimony as well as others, when you are in that trial. And so I shared with her how I felt and she didn't quite get it at that time. As time went by, Interestingly enough, she didn't get all the answers that she needed, but she started to text me saying, now I know what you mean by God is enough. I just got chills. Um, it is so amazing when you can get to the point where you don't have all the answers, but you still know solid, rock solid that God has you and he's taking care of you. And this is life is not all that we have. So there's no promises that we're going to get to live to 100 years old. I don't think I really want to. But, um, you know, we all have a path in life and it's all going to eventually end. So what will we do with the moment that we're in? How will we allow this to shape us and build us and make us a better person? Or are we going to be in misery and just look at it as a horrible thing you have to get through. So she continued to reach out and keep me filled in on things that were going on. And she, one morning, this was the weirdest thing. This has never happened to me before and I haven't had it happen to me since. I woke up and I work at a place where if I don't have patients to see, then they just tell me you don't have to come in today. And it ha happened to be one of those days where my work said, you don't need to come in today. I had this long list of things that I was so excited to be able to work on and get done. And I was so thrilled that I had this sudden opening in a whole day that I would get to plow through this list. And as I was doing my morning devotions and praying, I got this very strong inner quiet sense that I needed to set it all aside and pray for my friend all day. And I thought in my own human nature, I struggled for a little bit on that one. I'm like, but God, I, I could get so much done. There's so many things on this list that would just feel so good to check off. And I'm a very check it off my list kind of a person. So it was, it was a bit of a struggle inside and this thought occurred to me that I have had over and over and over again of fasting and I always think of fasting related to food and I've always been on the underweight side so for me it's very difficult for me to push through without eating for long periods of time I also end up feeling the shaky and everything and not to say that I won't ever fast but I've never really gone through a fast and I thought at that moment I got that feeling you are going to fast from your to-do list so that you can do the better thing the best thing and pray 
for your friend. And I thought that is a harder fast, I think, for me. So I said, sure, that's what I'm going to do. I, I agree with you, Lord, whatever it is that you want me to do, that's what I'm going to do. I cannot question it. I just have to obey. I just have to do it. So I went about, set my stuff aside, and I did text my friend because I knew that she was having trouble, but I didn't know the depth of it at that time. And so I told her, I'm just going to pray for you today, and that's all I plan on doing. So I spent some time uh, praying while I, and I read some Bible verses and praying, and I went for a walk and I prayed for her. And I spent the day that I should have been, not should have been, but had planned on doing that list in prayer for her. And at the end of the day, she told me that that was a morning she almost didn't get to work. She almost felt like giving up. And somehow knowing that I was praying for her that day, got her going, gave her a renewed hope and strength that she could get through the day. And by the end of the day, she was feeling a lot better. And she has brought that up so many times to me. And honestly, this is not a pat me on the back at all. That is how God works. This is God. It is God that is the one who gave me that sense to do that. And I don't have a special prayer that is different or more powerful or impactful than anybody else on the face of the earth. But when you get to that point where you just know that God's way is going to be the right way and you don't question and you don't ruminate over it forever, you just do what you know you need to do. There is such a peace and there is so much. And do you know, I don't know what was on that to-do list. I don't remember what it was, but I remember the day that I prayed for my friend and how much it meant to her. And so I want you to really think about that because those are the things that will take you in new directions. The way that this story isn't over, but continues and kind of in another exciting chapter of it is her health improved a lot after that. Um, the issues with the finances, her husband had been looking for a job for a couple years and he was putting out applications daily. And do you know that a man called him that he had not reached out to, who he had done work for building that man's business 10 years ago, that man reached out to him and said, you helped me build my business 10 years ago. Will you come to work for me? Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you, Lord. Like, it's not even the one that you thought it would be. It came out of nowhere, right? And that's how God works. And yes, we don't know, okay, nobody knows the for sure where, how long that job, what the end result, it doesn't matter. God provides for today. He gives us what we need for now. And when you remember these testimonies, when you hold on to the things that you know God has worked in your life, worked in other people's lives, it is so much more um, passionate for your life. You know, you have such a different sense of what is important. And so one of the things that I really would encourage you to do is to write these things down, get a journal, write things down as you go. I am not really, su wasn't usually really super faithful with writing in journals before, but I've gotten to where I try to do that during my Bible time because I forget, I forget like anybody, I was reviewing my journal earlier this morning and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that and I forgot about that and I forgot about that. You know, so this is why writing it down is really important and keeping that journal of testimonies and faith and that's how I encourage you to do throwback Thursday think about and really reflect on the things that will launch you forward into your future and really give you the power of the Holy Spirit to move you so I hope that that gives you a little encouragement for today and I hope as always that you're living your life on fire Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe or follow. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up.